Hey, Granny Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I know, Miss Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, Abner told Dick Huddleston about the Coonlan Diamond and the trouble it seems to be bringing him. Dick suggested the wise thing to do would be for Abner to take it to the county seat and sell it to the jeweler. This would enable them to pay off the mortgages on their homes and store and prevent further attacks from their unknown assailants. Meanwhile, Ulysses S. Quincy, to whom Lum had given the diamond temporarily for safekeeping, was struck down by a car. As we look in on our friends today, we find Abner, Dick Huddleston, and Cedric at the county seat, carrying out Dick's suggestion. Listen. Well, hurry up, Cedric. Don't stop and gawk in every store window on the street. Yes, boy. Just a minute, Mr. Abner. I, I want to look at something here. Don't get that, boy. Well, I'll take care of him, Abner. Uh, here's your jewelry store. Now, you go on in and see what kind of a deal you can make for the diamond. I'll take Cedric over to the restaurant, and then uh, he can meet us there when you get done. Yeah, all right, then. You've got the diamond, haven't you? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Right in this box in my pocket here. No, oh, because I'm telling you, I sure will be glad to get shut of that thing, too. Every foot of the trip up there, I expected Cedric to drive the car off in a ditch or something like that. Are well, you still worrying about the curse on that diamond? Well, all I know is that it gives me an awful creepy feeling to have it with me. Look what happened to Ulysses yesterday. He no more than took that diamond, walked out in the street, and bang, got hit by a car. Well, he didn't get hurt very bad. He just got shaken up a little. Man, it wasn't a diamond's fault anyways. It was his own fault. He just didn't look where he's going. I've been expecting that to happen to him for years, the way he walks across the street, his head down all the time. Yeah, but it never happened to him before, not till he got that diamond in his hand. Well, you go ahead now and get inside there and sell it, and that'll put an end to all these worries. Yeah, all right, sure. And right after lunch, while well, we'll go over to the wholesale house and take care of our business over there. Yeah, we got to be sure and do that, because that's the main excuse I told Lon for coming to the county seat today. Uh, does he know that you've got the diamond with you? Oh, no, no, he thinks I got his head over to my place, sir. I still hope he won't get too mad at me when he finds out what I've done. Well, he might be at first, but I think we can explain it to him. This is actually doing him a favor. It's going to put him into a lot of trouble, save your homes, and pay off the mortgage on your store, and Lum can still marry Miss Emily and have some cash to start out on. Yeah, yeah, sure. There ain't no doubts about that at all. Boy, oh, boy. What they won't try to sell you nowadays. And there comes Cedric. <laughs> you better go on inside. Yeah, all right. I'll see you later, you, then. You ought to look in that window back there, Mr. Dick. They got a bicycle in there without no wheels on it. A bicycle? <laughs> oh, that's an exercise machine, Cedric. Yeah, uh... Well, you couldn't get no exercise on that. That thing won't move an inch. If you wanted to go anywhere on it, you'd just have to carry it. Or, or is that how you get your exercise toting it around? No, you see, the whole idea... Wait a minute, there. where's Mr. Abner? Wasn't he standing here a minute ago? Yeah, he just went into the jewelry store there. He had some business to attend to. Oh, well, let's go in there with him. No, no, you and I are going to get some lunch, Cedric. Abner will join us over there. Oh, oh wait a minute. I want to look in this jewelry store window, though. Cedric, don't you ever get tired of staring into every show window you see? Boy, look at them wristwatches. Sure would love to have one of them. Look at them, Mr. Dick. Yeah, they are pretty nice, aren't they? I don't see none with Mickey Mouse on them. Them are the kind I like. Hmm. There's a nice glue in there. Don't look secondhand to me. They all look like... They all look like new ones, ain't they? No, I said that was a glue one, Cedric. That's the name of a watch. Come on, now. Let's uh, go get something to eat. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Up your mind now, what you want to you order. Study, don't rush me. This card here tells you what you can get, huh? That's right. That's the man you said it. Well, I'll have to study on it some more then. That uh, merchant's lunch looks pretty good. It does, huh? What, what's he have? Who? The merchant. He said his lunch looked good. Where's he sitting? Oh, Cedric, that's something listed on the menu there. That's what they call it, a merchant's lunch. See, here it is, right there in that blue writing. Oh, there. oh, yeah. I believe that's what I'll have. Oh, well, yeah, you can get that. But what about me? Have they got a riveter's lunch on their graveyard shift? Well, Cedric, you can get the merchant's lunch. I can't. Why, certainly. 
You won't tell on me, will you? <laughs> well, that doesn't matter, Cedric. You can have it. No, I reckon not. They, they don't know me here in this town. No. Uh, give us two of these uh, merchants' lunches, please. Yeah. Two on the merch. And I believe I'll have coffee, and uh, Cedric here will have some milk. Hey, draw on in a cow. Well, that should do it, Cedric. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wh- which fellow's going to draw the cow? Hmm? I'd love to see that. I, I can draw a rabbit. Don't want it. I just ain't no good on cow's tongue. <laughs> That's just restaurant slang, Cedric. That means coffee and milk. I played that at parties where you pin a tail on them, and I never could get the tail in the right place then either. Well, Cedric, he just isn't going to draw a cow. He just ordered coffee and milk for us. S- sort of city talk, huh? Uh-huh, I guess so. Boy, I, I sure like being in the city. Wish I lived here. You know, I might just quit my job and move here. Well, you can't do that, Cedric. You've got to stay on your job at the war plant at home. Why do the war's about over, ain't it? Now, what makes you think that? Well, we're sure whipping them Nazis all around. Well, yeah, but that job isn't done yet, so you better stick on yours till it is, Cedric. What do you think would happen if the soldiers got within five or ten miles of Berlin and then decided it was practically over and turned around and came home? Well, I weren't aiming to quit my job right away, I don't reckon. I'll wait till after the war's won. Well, I think you're going to have quite a little wait, Cedric. That thing over in the Pacific here, that's going to take a lot of time. And men. Well, I, I thought we was winning that, too, though. Well, we are. We, we captured Imogeno in, in Okinawahu or something like that. Well, yeah, there's a few things to consider, though, Cedric. For one thing, well, geography is on their side. Geography? Yeah. I'd say you let them have the geography. I never could learn that stuff no way. Well, what I mean, Cedric, is that the closer we get to Japan, why, the longer our supply lines get, and the shorter theirs become. Mom? Well, Well, what I mean is that even though we outclass Japan in production and military strength, the whole thing actually counts as the number of men in arms that we can put in action in a single point. A long supply line handicaps us. You understand that? Well, let's see now. Do I understand that? Or, uh, what was it I was supposed to understand now, Mr. Dick? Well, look, Cedric. See, the closer we get to, to Japan, the longer our supply lines become. And, naturally, the closer we get to Japan, well, the shorter they're... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Abner. Thank goodness. Well, I still say if they want our geography books, let them have them. Uh, here we are, right over here, Abner. There's a place for you right next to Cedric there. Yeah, you can sit right here, Mr. Abner. Oh, good, good. I don't get I'm hungry. Did you make a good deal, Abner? Well, I don't know yet, Dick. Uh, Jureman's is kind of busy right now, and he wants to have a little time to sort of examine the diamond, or uh, the, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, sure. So I left it there, and he wants me to come back about a half hour, and then he's going to tell me more about it. Oh, I see. Yeah, what'd you tell her to order up to eat here? Oh, better not tell him, Mr. Dick. No, it's a secret, Mr. Abner. We can't tell you. Well, it isn't any secret, oh, Cedric. Don't, don't, don't tell him. I'll get myself... Well, what trouble. is it? I want I to... I ain't have none of it. I'd better send it back. No, now, wait a minute now, Cedric. I want to know what it is. What they got cooked up, It Dick? ain't the blue plate. Now, guess. Well, what I ordered, uh, Abner, I ordered the merchant's lunch, and I ordered one for Cedric, oh, too. Oh, you told you. Well, it doesn't make any difference, Cedric. You're entitled to it. You want it. We're getting the merchant's lunch, then. <laughs> Sure was good vittles. We started as a merchant so that I could eat that all the time. Hurry up, Cedric. Don't be lagging behind all the time. I'm right cheer. Well, there's your jewelry store again, Abner. Reckon how long you be in there? Oh, well, no, it oughtn't to take me long. Ten or fifteen minutes, I reckon. Well, all right, Cedric, now I'll sort of hang around out here. Hurry up now and get back as quick as you can. Yeah, I will, I will. I'll see you in a minute. Say, Mr. Dick, I want to show you something in the window back here, some pretties. Yeah, all right, Cedric. Hmm. I wonder what those people are doing all standing in front of the jewelry store there. Well, I reckon they're looking at the pretties, too. Just wondering what they're doing there, anyway. Oh. Yeah, there is a bunch of them out there. Yeah. Must, must have cigarettes on sale. Cigarettes? Yeah. Well, not in a jewelry store, said they. Well, come here. Here's what I want to show you in this window back here, though. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, just looky there, boy. Ain't them the peachiest hunting knives you ever seen, Mr. Dick? Yeah. Those don't look bad at all, do they? That's a dandy, that thing. Could kill a man with one of them, couldn't you? Yeah, look at that fancy scabbard for that one there, Sammy. Yeah. Look at that long one right over there, the one with the fancy handle. There's yeah. the one I'd love. Hey, Dick! Hey, Dick! Uh, 
Come on, let's get out of here. What's the trouble, Mr. Abner? What's the matter, Abner? You know that jeweler fella? Yeah. Well, they found him laying dead on the floor in there. Dead? Yes, sir. And you know what? He died with that diamond in his hand. Come on, let's get out of here. 